Are you guys okay if I tell a gross story? Oh, yes. I'm okay with it. <laughs> God damn, Nick is fucking... Shot out Nick of is fist with pumping that. right now. I, I, I He's been hear, waiting. I, I want to hear... <laughs> I love, I love okay, okay. stories. <laughs> All right. It's not that gross, but oh, it's okay. gross. He's doing like the Nick Cage head spin and face off when he's dressed <laughs> yeah. as the priest. He's just yep. fucking going wild over this. God damn, that was funny. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of the F Face Podcast. This is episode 176. Uh, my name is Jeff Ramsey and with me as always, Andrew Panton and Gavin Free. Hello. Hiya. Hi. That's my name. I felt your name is Andrew. I felt like uh, yeah. I felt like that was a pretty good intro. <laughs> That's me. It was like nobody stepped on me. I didn't <laughs> stutter. I uh, I feel like we nailed that one. That's like a, a like if you want to show a, a like a dictionary definition of I a good intro, I feel like you could show that. I don't think it would be near the definition of energy though. No. You don't think I had very, energy? No, I think really. you had energy, but it wasn't like it wouldn't be a defining intro for energy. I think it was a perfectly acceptable intro uh, to this show. Yeah. Not memorable either way, but I like, felt like funny. It mm. <laughs> not memorable. Mm. No. Well, now, I mean, now you, and I say that like with nothing but respect and love for you, Jeff. Why that don't was you just, show me? All right, little dickhead. Why don't you show me? Why don't you show me energy? Oh, you want energy? Well, I uh, this is your... wacky energy. This is a talk show. <laughs> Morning radio. Where well, listen to face on station 106.5 The Wave. Oh. Why did you change the whole intro with energy, though? I, I don't know. I just, uh, I, I went into, when I think energy and, like, talking, I think, like, radio, because it feels very forced. I will say that, Jeff. You didn't have a forced energy. So you want me to do forced radio DJ yes. energy to start? Yes, I do. Out? Actually, I'd love to hear you do forced radio energy. Oh God! <laughs> See, it's not in you today because you're just Hello not there. Hello, okay. welcome to another episode of <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Face, face, face. That's right, it's me, the Gator Jeff Ramsey, and with me as always, the Gooch Pooch, <laughs> Gabby Wabby, and Johnny Caviar. What's going on, fellas? <laughs> Now that was very high energy, but I think your other one was better. Yeah. But that was Fucking great energy. Christ. Ten out of right. ten. That was memorable. We gotta move on. I don't know it why I great. said gator. Eric's asking why I said gator. I don't know. It just seemed like a morning. <laughs> I came out of you, and I like that. I like yeah. that we learned that about you today. I think we've got yeah. a new spontaneous nickname. <laughs> yeah, Gator. <laughs> Jeff the I'm not, Gator Ramsey. I'm not mad at Gator. I don't like it as much as T Bone, but I'll take Gator. Yeah, gator feels like they would be friends with T Bone. Like if T Bone had a friend named Gator, that just checks out. That feels Dude. right. T-Bone and Gator sounds like uh, <laughs> that sounds like an adventure two dudes have hopping trains, you know? Yes. <laughs> the adventure of T-Bone yeah. and Gator. Traveling across the country, mixing it up, getting into trouble, getting out of trouble. Oh. Yeah. I'd listen or watch T-Bone and Gator for sure. <laughs> Either way. I've made a worst of all time discovery. Oh. What's that? Oh, you did? That? Yeah, I don't know what, like, what the theme is for worst of all time. It could just be anything, right? Yeah. Well, it was sports, wasn't it? Oh, what we were I thought it was about. sports specific. Oh, okay. But. This isn't sports. It could. Well, that's well, fine. Why don't you I still want to hear your anyway. worst of all time. Okay, the worst uh, social media video editor of all time. Oh. oh. Britney Spears. She oh. is absolutely dog shit. There's cuts in the middle of words. Uh, there's like repetition of the say. I, I, none of it makes any sense. Do you think that's on her? Uh, well, like, is it her doing it? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I would assume not. Really? I don't hmm. think so. Ah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> but I have no idea. It could be. That's true. I, I, I haven't. I'm not in the hurt. Britney Spears loop right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You know, nothing against her, but it, there's absolutely no, you know, no cohesion <laughs> through it. You know, I saw the other day that you know that she had a video recently, uh, a non-cohesive video recently, where she was <laughs> clanging knives together. And, oh, yes, uh, I I read that they, they uh police department did a health and welfare check on her because of that. I assume they weren't real knives. Were they actual knives? I don't know, but I'm glad that people are looking out for her. <laughs> yeah, I, that's not a joke. I, I love Britney oh, I Spears. I, I want her. She's great. I want her to be happy and healthy. I think we and, all and do. enjoying freedom. Yeah, right. Like she had a fucking raw deal with that conservatorship, and she's finally free of it, and and newly divorced now too. Apparently, which is sad. Oh yeah, we were just we were talking about wow. her recently, and uh. Her young husband. Young ex-husband. Soon to be ex-husband. Yeah, were we the cause of that? <sighs> I think we were the cause of something else recently, weren't we? No. Okay. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just stop it there. Yeah. We weren't. <laughs> 
We 100% were not. Uh, oh, good. You want to hear my worst of all time? I got a worst of all time. It's sports related. Okay. MMA. I, I don't know if anyone else has done research for this. I kind of struggled with like, you don't want somebody that like just bounced out of any league immediately. Like, I don't know. I just feel like that's, that's, you want like, longevity and their badness or like they were so uniquely bad that things like ended or or that's like the blemish on their thing my worst of all time and it's to this day the worst sporting moment i've ever seen for just being completely unenjoyable nothing (laughs) great about it is an mma fight between miguel falco and gerald harris which happened like over 10 years ago at this point i'd say and i still think about it the most non excite just nothing happened just two guys looking at each other and it was miguel falco's first fight in the ufc and he had all this rep going into it as like this devastating knockout puncher that is going to destroy everyone like none of his fights exited the first like made it out of the first round and it was just nothingness so for the, the entire type time type of match where if it was the first ever mma fight the whole sport wouldn't have taken off. <laughs> it would have collapsed and that and that is only emphasized by the fact that that is Mikel Falco's only fight in the UFC. I think he got arrested for something and there was visa issues. So then he was quickly like once other problems showed up, cut from the roster. But what made it like exceptionally bad is he was fighting a guy named Gerald Harris. And at that time, the kind of general rule in the UFC was if you lose three fights in a row, you're done. But that is sort of the exception, like three fights, you're out. He was on a three fight winning streak, lost that fight and was cut from the roster because it was so boring. One and, and out. Uh, one and one out. And one loss and out. So that is my my worst of all time when I think of, of sports is immediately to Miguel Falco, Gerald Harris. It's a shame, too, because Miguel Falco was a really good fighting name. Like you could have the Falco punch. You could be pr- <laughs> you, you could be <laughs> protected could, by Falcos. You could be protected by Falcos. Exactly. <laughs> You could be uh, some uh, some version of Ed Falco, I guess. <laughs> you could That's be yeah, really. For a you could be Nurse fighter? Betty. <laughs> well, no. What about Falcon Punch? Like, I think of Star Fox. Like, it's it's not exactly the same, but this reminds me. Yeah, brain Falco goes. Punch. Yeah, yeah. Isn't yeah. that what you just said? Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. The first, it was the first thing. Uh, Jeff, do you have do you have a woat for anything? No, I haven't looked into it yet. Uh, unfortunately, I uh, I apologize, but I will deliver some woats for you guys soon. I- I have I have one, but I don't think you guys are going to agree that it's a woat. Okay. Uh, okay. But it is the thing in which all woats are judged to me, uh, which is uh, Mario Mendoza, former baseball player, as he was so bad, uh, having a league average, uh, a batting average of 200, that they named the 200 batting average the Mendoza line. <laughs> where if you are batting below 200 you are likely to get cut or sent down and that is the line at which he batted almost i think almost every year of his professional <laughs> career so to be yeah. so bad that they name the bar that they judge people <laughs> being bad after you to me is That's really great. exceptional and really stand out in terms of what the woat is. I would argue that he, if he's not below his own bar, he's, there's other woats. Exactly. There are. Yeah. But, but they are, like Jeff's intro today, not memorable. And Mario Mendoza <laughs> what the is fuck? Why due are we to keep- <laughs> the Mendoza line. God damn it, why do I keep catching stray bullets about my fucking intro? It was a perfectly <laughs> regulation was intro. Yeah, Thank you, Gavin. Yeah, no, it was fine. Sorry, Gator. I just thought that, you know, it's just not memorable. And, and I think Mario Mendoza is. And I, think, something to consider. I think I got a nickname. I think a nickname came out of it, so that is pretty and memorable yeah, right there. That's true. Fucking hell. Well, the nickname came on the redo, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, it didn't but, come from yeah. your unmemorable Yeah, intro. but if I but if I hadn't done a perfectly regulation fairly memorable intro that then you guys shit on i wouldn't have done the second intro yeah but that's all butterfly effect stuff you can't really argue you know that's like going back like three trades or like three years in the nba and going like well if this guy didn't get traded here this wouldn't have happened you can't do that what what do you think is the worst shit what what do you mean like it's like common shits like dog shit like something's dog shit or like horse shit if it's not true Uh, like what's the worst shit i don't even know how to measure Uh. this 
Well, how many shits are there? There's dog shit, horse shit. This bullshit. Bullshit. Yeah, uh, bullshit's pretty bad. Uh, Fish shit. No. Are we being Deep literal? Camp? What about wombats? Wombats poop square. Oh, there's bat oh. shit. Oh, like guano? But like, it's a weird... It's like how it's used as opposed to what the actual shit is, is the, the problem. I think dog shit is the worst because... Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean anything other than terrible. Yeah, exactly. But I, I think a bull's literal shit is way worse than a dog's literal shit. So it's just like, how are we measuring hmm. this? What's this? What, what animal has the smelliest shit? What I have no idea. What animal has the smelliest shit? Let's Nick see. Thinks I bet it's, it's a cow human. What, what's the name of it? No. Maybe uh, it's a herring. Oh. <laughs> Horse shit, cat shit, dog shit, human <laughs> shit, just cow off? shit, pig shit, <laughs> elephant shit. All the shit, greatest hits. Junk is this, shit. Is this a list classics. or are you just Yeah, that's naming? a list. That's, okay. It goes from one to eight or whatever. So apparently horse shit's the worst. A preview of an upcoming uh, shit draft. But we're, oh. but we're number four. So <laughs> we're hanging in there as humans. Man, do I have a shit story oh, for let's, you guys? Let's go. Too. Oh, oh go f let's do it. Oh, oh yeah, I can do that. Uh, so... Uh, it's been a very busy few weeks. I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm getting married and we're getting kind of close to it. So that a lot of stuff is happening. And uh, in addition to the fact that for some fucking reason, I decided to make another podcast and also mm -hmm. start doing gaming content again. So I've been a little busy. A little Jeffy's been busy lately. And uh, it's been a, a particularly stressful time, which is cool. I don't mind stress. But I thought last weekend that I would. Emily has been similarly stressed. So I thought I'm gonna do something nice for her and by proxy for me. So I booked us a couple's massage, something that <laughs> we always get like oh, a couple's no. massage on a vacation, like we go to Mexico or somewhere, right? And so I thought, well, we can, there's no reason why we can't do one in Is town, it like, like on a fucking same Saturday. Room sort of thing, or you're just both getting one at the same yeah. time? Yeah, no, same, okay. same, same room. And uh, so I went to this place we'd never been to before. It was fine. It's one of those, you know, spa chains, uh, fairly regulation uh, place. And, you know, the, the way it, most of them were, I don't know if you guys have had couples massages before, but the way it traditionally works when I do this is there's like a, they tell you to get there like 20 minutes early because they want you to like get undressed and get into your robe and chill out in their little waiting room and listen to whales mate or whatever <laughs> and drink cucumber water. And so we get there 20 minutes early or whatever, and we, they, they take us into a room and it's like a little, I don't know, meditation, calming room. It's got some, you know, it's got like fucking bamboos and shit in there. And there's like a door to the left for the men's room and a door to the right for the ladies' room. And they go, just make yourselves comfortable. And whenever you're ready, go in and change your clothes and then come back out. Sit here for 15 or 20 minutes, you know, smell the aromatics or whatever the fuck is going on in here and relax and we'll come get you and massage you. And so I go into the men's room and Emily goes into the women's room and you walk in and there's like a, there's just like a, a stall that's shut and then a shower to the right and then, uh, uh, on the left, uh, some, uh, what do you call that thing? A sink, right? And then <laughs> on the right, there's a couple of, uh, <laughs> there's lockers to put, put your shit in. And so I start to get undressed and put my stuff in the locker. And I'm not thinking anything. I'm, I'm alone in this room, right? It's, it's a really small room. It's not that big. There's only one stall for the bathroom. And as I'm taking my shirt off, I hear a guy go, Oh! <laughs> <laughs> And I go, oh, oh no. no, I am not alone in this room. And this guy's oh. going through it. And I don't smell anything. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, uh, all right. And I just, I like, I should get dressed. I should get, you know, undressed quickly and put this robe on. And so I'm just like getting undressed and throwing stuff in. And I'm just hearing like, Ooh, plop, plop, plop. <laughs> oh like this God. guy's going oh. through it. He's having oh, a God. major event in the toilet, right? And so I'm like pretty uncomfortable because it's a pretty <laughs> small bathroom. And I feel like I'm, three feet away from a guy who's dumping out his kidneys. And, uh, and so I go, uh, I'm like, oh, fuck. So I'm like, just like shoving stuff in the locker. And I don't understand how the lock works. And so I just like slam it shut. And I'm like, fuck this. I'm getting out of here. And as I'm getting out of here, I hear the guy go, oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> like at the top of his voice. And I go, oh, no. 
I get the <laughs> fuck out of there. I don't know what that is. I don't want to know. I don't want to be in the room. I don't want to smell it when it happens. I just get out of there and I go sit down in the waiting area and Emily comes out a few seconds later and I tell her, kind of whisper the story to her and we both just start laughing. <laughs> like we're laughing and laughing and laughing. And not too long later, this woman, this older woman comes out of the women's bathroom and she's all dressed. She's got a dress on and like her hair is done nice and she's got earrings and jewelry on and stuff. Clearly it's taken her a while to get dressed. And I immediately clock and go like, Oh, I bet she's the wife or the significant <laughs> other of the dude who's uh, shitting his brains out in the other bathroom. And uh, and so we start to get a little quiet, you know, and I just keep thinking, like, I hope they come to get us before this guy walks out the door because I don't want to see what made those noises. Right. I don't want anything to do with it. <laughs> and uh, and we're just trying not to laugh. And like, we just keep looking at each other. It's one of those things that every time we look at each other, we just start fucking busting out laughing. And we're trying not to to be too disruptive to the lady who's, you know, enjoying her post massage uh, or whatever. And and then. I, told, I asked Emily, I'm trying to say something, and I go, did you lock your locker? And she's like, yeah, I locked my locker. Why? And I was like, oh, I, I don't know how to do it. I couldn't figure it out, and I was trying to get out of there in a hurry. And she was like, they didn't tell you how to lock it? They just, they showed me, and they didn't show me. It was a lady, so she didn't go into the bathroom with me. She just opened the door, and I walked in. And so Emily told me how to lock it, and I thought, well, my phone is in there, and a bunch, well, yeah, my phone is in there, a bunch of other stuff. Oh, no. And so I should, I'll just run in there and lock it real fast, because this guy has not come out. But I also think, like, you know, the paranoid part of me is, like, the guy's been in there, like, a half an hour. Is he just going through my wallet right now, you know? <laughs> so I run in there, and and I I don't see the guy. I open the door, and there's nobody in there, and I think that's weird. And then I hear the shower going. I realize that I'm here in water, and he's taking a fucking shower. And so I lock my wallet, I get out of there, and I go tell him, like, it was so bad, he, he shit himself. He had to take a shower. <laughs> Like, that's why he was screaming, shit, oh, shit. He must, have, he must have shit all over himself, and his only recourse is to take a fucking shower now. Like, and this poor woman has been out there for 15 minutes waiting on him, and this dude is now in the shower. <laughs> and you figure, you know, it, guys typically get dressed pretty fucking fast, right, in the grand scheme of things. So he's probably been in there a while, and she's just waiting, and I feel terrible. Because this guy's clearly going through it and clearly having to wash the shit off of his body from his explosive diarrhea or whatever it was. And uh, so I go back out and I whisper to Emily and we start laughing again. And then they come and get us. And then we have a massage in the same room, normal bog standard massage. It was fine. I gave it a B, B, B minus massage. It was okay. But the whole time, I'm just trying not to laugh because all I can hear in my head is that guy go, oh, shit, oh, shit, <laughs> over and over and over again. And I'm just like giggling to myself. The entire, I think the lady thinks I'm ticklish. I'm not, you know. And as soon as the, it's like an 80 minute massage. So as soon as the <laughs> massage is over, Emily and I are walking back. We look at each other and I'm like, how was the massage? And she's like, yeah, this is and then we just start laughing. We just start laughing again about the dude who took the dump. And we laugh all the way back. We get back to that common area and we sit down and they come and they bring us our water and they say, you know, drink this water. Don't put your clothes on yet. Continue to stay. Stay here as long as you want. Relax. Detoxify. In, enjoy being here. Don't be in a hurry to get out of here. You know, you want to like, I don't know, settle before you leave. And so we're sitting there and, uh, and we're just la We're literally still joking and laughing about the guy screaming shit oh shit. We just keep saying it to each other over and over again. <laughs> and out of the blue. My stomach goes, <laughs> no. And Emily goes, oh my God, what was that? And I go, uh, and I get hit with a cramp and I go, uh, I'll be right back. And I run into the bathroom <laughs> and I barely get the toilet door, like the stall door open, turn around, pull my pants down. The second <laughs> I'm hovering over the bowl, before I even touch, a shotgun of diarrhea comes out of me, like kaboom. And I go, oh, oh. And it's like, I'm getting hit with instant karma. And I <laughs> just like, become the guy. I don't think it's karma. I think it's a time loop. I think you were putting your thing in the, in the oh, locker no! as that was happening. I was the guy in the shower and I never it was oh. you the whole time. <laughs> that never crossed my mind. Uh, well, I diverted the timeline a little bit. Uh, so anyway, I'm like, oh, and then I have like two or three more shotgun blasts. Just heinous, <laughs> stinky oh and terrible. And I was normal. I was feeling normal. <laughs> I didn't have any weird food or anything. And I'm like, oh, God. And I and, and in my head, I'm like, well, the only saving grace is I haven't shit all over myself, you know? So I, like, clean up. And it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a bad duty, but it's not, I, I didn't explode <laughs> on myself, right? I don't need to take a shower. I'm like, the one thing I'm hanging on to is, like, I am definitely not taking a shower right now. That's no big deal. And, uh, <laughs> and I get up, and I flush the toilet. Oh, God. And I go, oh, oh shit. No. Oh, shit. The toilet <laughs> works at like, I'm going to say 18% <laughs> toilet level. 
You found the oh shit. I found the oh shit. And so, and I've dropped, I've dropped, <laughs> I've dropped bull and cow and donkey shit at this thing. Like I've made a mound and it's like siphoning off little bits. I have to, fl- and it takes like a full minute for this thing to fill back up. And if you oh try to sur- short circuit and do it early, there's no like half power. It just drains the water and nothing goes out. I have to, I, I flushed eight times oh. and I still had about. 20% of the <laughs> of the fish flakes left in the bowl, right? Oh. And I don't know what to do. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> I was hoping we get to that. I can't make it go away. And I've been in there for like 15 minutes now. And I'm like, the only thing I'm thinking is like, I'm going to come out and Emily's going to be completely dressed and waiting on me going, what the fuck is going on? Why are you take? Why did you take so long? Right. And, uh, and I just, I gave up. I just, I didn't know what else to do. I tried and I tried and I tried and I tried and I got almost all of the duty down, but some of it just wouldn't go. And all I could think of is like, this is a known problem for them. This happens every day. They're they're the ones, they should fix their fucking toilet. They got to expect this is happening. And I feel so terrible, but I just like, I just left the bathroom and I walked outside and Emily is, hasn't moved. She's still in her robe and her eyes are, are like the size of dinner plates, and she's just looking at me. And I go, "Hey!" And she goes, "I heard it all. I heard everything. Oh, I heard she heard. No. She heard my do- my shit was so loud. She heard my poops. She heard me moaning. She heard me saying shit to myself. She heard me flushing the toilet eight times. And then so I explain the story to her. Oh my god! And then she has to leave and go get dressed after she laughs at me for like a half an hour. So then I'm sitting in there and I'm just waiting for her to get dressed. And the entire time I'm like, please don't let a guy walk into that bathroom. Please don't let a guy walk into that bathroom. Please don't let him see what's in there. You know, please, please let us just get out of here. And then finally she came out and we got out of there and I can never go back to that place again. (laughs) (laughs) Relaxing massage. Relaxing massage on a Saturday. Yeah, did it really, really bring you down? Really calm you? Yeah. Yeah. I was perfect. So you pick like laxative instead of lavender as the fragrance. <laughs> Dude, I don't know if it was some sort of a shit atsu massage that I was not familiar with or something. <laughs> but goddamn, dude, it was something about that place it clears you out. You had some what? knots in areas you did not expect. You got you got de in the worst way. All I could think of the whole time is like, I've done this to myself. I made fun of the guy <laughs> too much. I crossed a threshold, like an invisible universal threshold, <laughs> and now I'm paying the price for it. I shouldn't have laughed that hard, you know? And yeah, uh, yeah there you go. That's, oh, my, that's my Saturday. That's amazing. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. So was it overall, did you come, out, come away less relaxed than before you went in? Yeah, yeah. I definitely was worse oh, for wear. 100%. I mean, I was lighter. I weigh less. <laughs> but... <laughs> But yeah, it was, uh, it, it definitely ruined the effect of the massage pretty quickly. Oh man, that is brutal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what's, uh, what's new with y'all? <laughs> I had a, <laughs> I had a realization with Gavin that has helped me understand him a little bit better. Oh no. Do and I you know, know about this? It, no, you don't know about this. Oh shit. But, uh, <laughs> well you, in the recent episode, you described how your internal thought process goes and it was very foreign to what I experienced. It was tough. It's not very to, wordy. Yeah, not very wordy, more image based. And it's just like so foreign to what I'm used to. And like just trying to, I was trying to piece together and I was thinking about it. And this isn't going to mean anything to you, Gavin, but it really, it helped me put things into perspective of how to view you. You <laughs> are internally running a Chip Kelly offense, is what I realized. You and Chip Kelly, one and the same. Chip <laughs> Kelly was a, a college football coach who had a, a like a, a run into the NFL, I'd say maybe like seven years ago. And his whole thing was what made him unique is instead of like, you know, doing play calls, they would do images on the sideline to do the play. So the players would look oh, at that. Yeah. That's your brain, <laughs> Gavin. That is just how I imagine how you function. Chip Kelly, also known for a high speed offense. You love high speed cameras. It all make like it's just one on one. So I'm now thinking of you in the same context as Chip Kelly, and it is really just, I feel like I understand you better now. It's not as confusing. That's amazing. I have context but, for you. And was he all right, or was he a woat? Uh, he, he was, he did not last long in the NFL. Okay. <laughs> all of <laughs> that, the, the Chip Kelly experience did not translate. 
That being said, uh, I believe that that uh, process is still adopted today by a lot of teams. A lot of a lot of teams will use images now instead of uh, yes, yeah. So he had a lasting effect for sure. It's like say Gavin does. I'd say Gavin has a lasting effect. <laughs> Maybe not as lasting as your shit in that that bathroom, Jeff. But <laughs> Gavin What's stays around. Someone on the f face subreddit Swifty Oak made a picture, and it's a, inside you. <laughs> there are two wolves. So this is Gavin's two wolves. Gavin has two wolves inside him. <laughs> one stands up and go to bed. The other one has an external monologue. They posted it, and then they had there are the only reply on their thread, and they just said internal monologue. <laughs> everything, everything about it's a mess, and I think it's so. It's been making me laugh. It's been making me laugh all day long. One stands up and go to bed. Is I just keep walking around the, around the house saying it. It's so funny. That's actually pretty accurate because I uh, once again this week tried talking to myself, and it. Oh. And I, I tried one thing. I tried to say one thing, and it wasn't even. It didn't even come out grammatically correct. <laughs> What did you say? I had a pile of laundry on the floor and I just like walked up to it and exclaimed out loud, tomorrow is chores. <laughs> <laughs> that, title, that has to be one of the titles. For the episode, tomorrow is chores. It's like, oh my God, I didn't even, it's not even a sentence. <laughs> I really don't know how to do it. <laughs> I've been having a communication tomorrow nightmare. I've also, I've also been having the worst dreams. Like I talk about... I've talked about how shit some of my dreams are in the past where I just dream mm -hmm. about my nightstand. I just dream about what my head is pointed at in real life. And uh, my cats have just been dicking around a lot recently to the point where I've just started sleeping with my AirPods in. I'll just like pop on a YouTube video and uh, listen to something to fall asleep. But it's, it's really making my dreams shit because in, I can't hear what anyone's saying in any of my dreams. <laughs> and I'm trying to listen. I'm like, huh? And, and then I'll pull my AirPods out of my ears in the dream and have them in my hand and I can still hear the video. So I'm like, oh, no, no, sorry. No, they're, they're still in my real ears. These are my fake, these are my dream <laughs> AirPods, but my real ears still have. So it's like I'm in a lucid dream, but I don't do anything interesting other than try to explain that my actual ears still have my AirPods in. And that's why I can't hear anyone. And I've oh. just had that dream like two or three nights in a row. Oh, <laughs> it's so dog shit. Was there a movie at one point or a, a entertainment property where there were aliens living on Earth as regular humans, but they didn't know they were aliens like they were asleep and they were just living in like human bodies as vessels? And then at some point it gets activated and they realize they're aliens. I feel like that's you. I feel like <laughs> if that's be. if that's actually happening... I think you're just an alien doing your best in a human body and you just, you haven't been, you're a super <laughs> agent that hasn't been awoken by the mothership yet. Uh, it's possible. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely unaware of it if that's the case. Yeah. Well, you would. I, I just, I'm just so frustrated that I'm aware that I'm dreaming and it doesn't even break the dream. <laughs> like, I'm there telling people that, like, <laughs> I'd love to listen to, like, I know it's not worth listening to. But I'm still trying to like be polite to them. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh, I, I love you so much. <laughs> you, I, it must be so boring to be you sometimes. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Just boring dreams. You got nobody to talk to when you're alone. You can't even talk to yourself. You dream about dreaming. You can't <laughs> like it just, oh man. We're in that busy fall season. There's so much to do. There's a lot going on. It's difficult. But one thing, thanks to our friends at Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, with them, you don't need to sacrifice high-quality meals. They can fuel you up for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat and enjoy, then get back to your crushing of goals. Relish the best of autumn with fall flavors or limited time only hearty, comforting meals featuring seasonal veggies like cranberry, pecan, chicken, and apple Dijon pork chops ready in just two minutes. They'll satisfy your fall cravings during the busy season without the hassle. 
Round out your meal and replenish your snack supply with an assortment of 45 plus add-ons to suit vari- various preferences and tastes. Choose from breakfast items like our delicious apple cinnamon pancakes, bacon and cheddar egg bites, and potato bacon and egg breakfast skillet. Or for an easy wellness boost, try refreshing beverage options like cold-pressed juices, shakes, and smoothies. This October, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door. Ready in just two minutes, no prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com face50 and use code face50 to get 50% off. That's code FACE50 at Factormeals.com slash FACE50 to get 50% off. What do you call a person who speaks three languages? Trilingual. Someone who speaks two? Bilingual. Someone who speaks one? American. Only 22% of Americans speak a language other than English at home. Start learning a new language this fall and be the exception, not the rule. Because with Babbel... You start speaking a new language in just three weeks. This fall, you can start speaking a new language with Babbel. Why Babbel? Because it works. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or fooling yourself with language apps that are little more than games, Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel is designed by real people for real conversations. All of Babbel's tips and tools for learning a new language are approachable, accessible, rooted in real-life situations, and delivered with conversation-based teaching. I mean, Babbel's courses are so helpful because they help you learn real-life conversation skills. It's so easy to pick up on things like ordering food, asking for directions, speaking to merchants, without having to consult language apps while on vacation, which is something that will take you out of that experience. It just makes it more difficult. I mean, if I'm in France, you know, bonjour, saying hello to some people, uh, it, it's, you know, you want it, you want it to be clear. You don't want to have to, like, look at an app to say something as basic as hello. Studies from Yale, Michigan State University, and others continue to prove Babbel is better. For instance, one study found that using Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester at college. With over 10 million subscriptions sold, Babbel is real language learning for real conversations. Here's a special limited time deal for our listeners to get you started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com face. Get 55% off at babbel.com face, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash face. Rules and restrictions may apply. Cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. And we're not talking some ridiculous belief system from some BS guru. No, we're talking about our sponsor, Fume, and how they look at the problem in a different way. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong, so instead of a drastic and comfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-nominated device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses all natural delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habits. Another just great thing about Fume is how it looks. It's beautiful, the real wood and the shape. It's awesome. It's something that you could really feel cool using. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 100,000 customers and has thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the Journey Pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use code FACE to save 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code FACE to save an additional 10% off your order today. I I sent Gavin a clip of me talking to my, like I was just starting talking to myself and I, was, I thought, oh, I'll just record this and do like what I would have done without recording it. And he refused to believe that it was real. He was like, this is not... <laughs> Well, you don't do monologue. this. You said more stuff in five minutes than I say in a week. <laughs> <laughs> 
it was like a six minute thing of I was just monologuing to myself, but I was by myself. <laughs> I was alone, so I was just filling time. It's filling. It space. was all full grammatical sentences as well. I was impressed. Maybe, maybe words are finite. And we only have so many that we can say. And Andrew and I will someday run out and Gavin will still be going strong. Gavin is going to reach age 250 and you and I are going to be dead by 60. Like it's, it's he is extending that mileage. We are not going to last nearly as long. It's going to um, be a different kind of podcast after we die. So, so the lonelier you are, be. the lonelier you get, because all my friends will be dead. <laughs> You're going to start the beginning. The first five years of your life are in total silence, and the last five are also going to be in total silence. Maybe you guys remember Highlander. Maybe Highlanders weren't actually immortal. Maybe they just didn't talk enough. <laughs> they just outlived everybody. Oh, uh, that's a real dog shit movie. That one, I love it. Thousand uh, Words. Never heard of it. I never watched it. So he no, gets cursed, Highlander. and he only yeah. oh. Uh, well, Eric okay. just posted a movie poster for A Thousand Words, which it is, is an Eddie uh, Murphy movie. A Thousand Words. A fast-talking agent can only speak 1,000 more words before <laughs> he dies in this feel-good comedy starring <laughs> Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> I, that just sounds like a contract negotiation that, be, that became a movie plot. He's like, I just don't want that many lines. I don't want to say Limited that much script. in this movie. It's very front-loaded, that script. Yeah. <laughs> well, so um, what, does he end up just in silence? I'm sure that he reverses the curse in some way. I'm sure he learns, like, an important life lesson, right? Yes, absolutely. Hey, which Highlander is a dog shit movie? The original with Rucker Hauer and Christopher Lambert? Rucker Hauer is in that movie? The original, he's the bad guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, I remember Clancy Brown. There's a there there were a couple there was a TV show and there was a couple of remakes but I think the original was a pretty good movie. I mean I haven't seen this since I was a kid but I, I mean it's it's like good it's like shit good it's not good mm. good. Yeah. Yeah. Watch it now. Was Highlander 2 any good? Well, no, I don't think so. No. That, maybe, that, maybe that's what you're thinking of. <laughs> Isn't that the movies where they kept making sequels but all the sequels were to the first movie? That yeah. sounds right. Yeah, I don't yeah, think that they should right. be allowed to do. That. I hate that. I that think is, Mario Van Peebles ugh. was involved at some point, right? Was he in a? Yeah, Highlander? that sounds right. Maybe one of the remakes. Solo himself. Huh? I'll say it's no blast. That's for sure. Like, oh, yeah. we gotta Whatever watch Highlander blast. Oh, yeah. have, that in the calendar doesn't come close to blast. Has anyone explored more Little Hobo, the littlest hobo, since watching it? You go deep. God, no. Jeff, you seen all season one? No, but I did see the the new version of it you sent me, which looks pretty exciting. Simon and Rex, yeah. yeah. I love that there's always a dog show in Canada, it seems. There's always a dog <laughs> doing something for someone. Do you think Canadians really well here. just appreciate dogs more than Americans do? Uh, I hope so. I'd, that'd be a great thing to claim. What? Didn't we have Rin Tin Tin? That, yeah. was, like, that was like a whole thing. Well, we also That's had a Christmas song. too, right? There was boom, like Wishbone and, and stuff as well, right? We had yeah. Boomer, we had Benji. We've had a lot of, we've had a, a pretty rich history. I mean, Snoopy, of yeah, dogs. I mean, you yeah, have some great Snoopy. dogs. Yeah, and think about if Snoopy. We're, we're talking fake dogs. You got Scooby Doo, you got Snoopy. We could have a whole got, fake Clifford dog might be oh, Canadian. Dog, dog draft. Dog draft. We also, oh, you know, we also had Turner and Hooch. Mm hmm. Now that I'm, man, fuck Canada. We love dogs. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we clearly love dogs more than Canada. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you? I never said it. I said I'd like to claim yeah, it. I didn't it. even walk say it we back. are. Walk it back, Canadian. There's no walking back. I never walked it forward. <laughs> I can't walk it back. When does our uh, face-off start coming out? Uh, Monday. Uh, it's already out now if yeah. you go to facepod.com. Sick. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> their episodes have begun by the time this is out. I watched the intro, and I fucking laughed and laughed and laughed. We put funny. up. It's so if you, if you want to get a tease of it before you sign up, uh, facepod.com slash first, we put out like the first 13 minutes like we talked about in the episode. So it's all the <laughs> drafting and everything <laughs> up into the baseball game. Oh. Does it just <laughs> end with like, all right, let's, get, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really yeah. is. And then it goes into like the teaser for like the thing. It's like a minute of like, us yelling at the baseball game and then it ends and I just went, that's great, man. That like we really nailed that. <laughs> that, <laughs> that reminds me of uh when I did the 
when I did the presentation for why I deserved the cock award, yeah. I shared my screen and I shared everything and I think it was edited out. I made I put jokes in all of my tabs, but then it was just the the section in which I went to share my screen and showed all the tabs I had open was removed, which then is alarming because of like what the tabs were. I don't remember all of them, but like one of them was like child kicking velocity was a search I had. Like I had all very clear jokes that I'm assuming just went unnoticed, but I could also imagine the editor looking at it just being like, ah, it's just personal stuff. <laughs> He's just looking at this. I think I had Brainston Pickle as a search in one of my tabs. <laughs> this is, oh, we better cut this out. We don't want to expose Andrew. <laughs> so no one, it's not Andrew that from a private concept of exposing. I just think uh, my concern was they looked at it and thought that is just what I would naturally search. Yeah. yeah. And no one spoke to you about it. No. I just heard and because I brought it up and uh, and then I heard later. But Andrew, Andrew and Gavin, did you guys see the special thing that happened on the break show that we filmed right this week? I don't know when. I guess no, I, I heard something really exciting happen. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, though. Dude, it was pretty fucking awesome. I bought this like basketball blind box thing uh-huh. where you know you just get a an autographed basketball. It could be any of like a hundred different players. And uh, we pulled a Shaquille O'Neal autographed basketball. Wow. Oh, my God. I, I can't imagine anybody much cooler than Shaquille O'Neal to get a, a signed basketball. No. Player. That's especially, fucking awesome. Especially considering, you know, I, I don't know. I, I feel like we've spoken about him positively in the past on this podcast, and I'm, I'm a big fan. It was pretty fucking awesome. That's so cool. That's my plug for the break show. All right, and also, it's just it's fitting because you got the Shack attack on the desk. Like it's we've been foreshadowing this. We put forever. we put the yeah. basketball in the Shack so that he's oh. holding it. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to really, watch really, that. Really, 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 really cool. I think those Eric break shows are really fun. I've really enjoyed watching you guys open those cards, and it's good. Thanks, man. We've uh, we <laughs> I've got a thing I've been doing in the background that nobody's caught on to yet that I've that I've really been Ooh. enjoying. I don't I don't have the opportunity to do it a lot, but when I do it, it makes me fucking laugh and <laughs> it's directed at one person and that person hasn't figured it out yet and I want to see how long that'll go on for. That's really funny. <laughs> yeah. Are they on this podcast? Uh they may or may not be. Oh. If they're not on this podcast, they listen to it. They're either on this podcast or they listen to it. So. Oh. Do you if- have anything that you have hidden, Gavin, throughout these? That 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 are just nobody's discovered yet. Throughout what? Like, <laughs> that, Jesus. I think that's, as a podcast, that's a no. That's a no. That's a no. Yeah. yeah, that's a no. Yeah. You don't have any of those. I have I have a few things that I I've put out there that you're, the you're laying little found. Easter eggs. Uh, yeah. I, whenever I can, I like to throw out. Eric and I were talking about in something we recorded recently. Did like the ARG stuff of Cloverfield was so much fun. Whenever <laughs> I have the ability to throw an Easter egg or that type of thing out there, I do. So I definitely. I have a few that people haven't found, and that that brings me a lot of joy that they're just there undiscovered. What's What's the name of that game we're playing, the three of us? You and Immortality. Andrew. Immortality. Yeah. And, by, and when, by the time this is out, that is not out yet. That'll start coming out on Rooster Teeth first for our Let's Play channel because... There, it, it's like, it, boy, is is it our take on Funhouse? Boy, is there nudity? <laughs> oh yeah, there's there's a lot of fucking in it. There's fucking. Sure. There's, there's a lot. There's a lot it's, there. It's really of, something. <clears throat> it, we, Ga- Gavin, it's the biggest whiplash I've ever had with a video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, me too. I I actually recently just played my first sort of like naughty naked game. <laughs> video yeah. Game. Okay, what? Yeah, tell us about it, man. And go then we'll get, yeah, no, go for well, it. As, as you know, Meg and I play uh, Battle Chess, which is a game from the late 80s, early 90s, where it's chess, but they like have little fights. It's animated. Yeah, it's and, like in uh, Star Wars. Yeah, I was like, I wonder if there's like a modern, <laughs> modern version of Battle Chess. And there is, and apparently it's shit. But then in the Steam menu was a game called Sex Chess. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh,. I thought it'd be funny to install that, but it's it's not funny. It's just no. <laughs> it's just sad. It's just horrible. And yeah, I wish I could unbuy it. Yeah, I don't get it. Well, the fact uh, that you you can't you bought it on Steam. Yeah. Yeah. So you've played it for more than two hours. So it is clearly you've hated it. Have I played it for more than two hours? I don't. Well, if you can refund it, if you play for under yeah. two hours, you can get a refund on the game. So. Oh. Well, maybe I'm, I'm st- assuming. I must still be in that. I've probably played it for six minutes. <laughs> that- well, you're good. Yeah. 
Go get that refund. Yeah, go get that refund. If he doesn't get that refund, we'll know he's still playing oh, offline. Yeah, yeah it, it has been <laughs> such a joy. And I hope, like, you know, in social media, like TikToks or whatever, there's sometimes that annoying thing of, like, stick to the end. That mm -hmm. couldn't be more true to our first immortality <laughs> video, oh where God. I love that game so much, just, just genuinely, and you guys were not clicking with it for 98% <laughs> of that first video. It is a nonstop train of shitting on this thing that I like. So I was just rolling with it, and then it, it shifted, and it connected with you guys. And it has been a completely different experience in video two. It nope. knocked my dick completely off of my body. I could not <laughs> believe what yeah. happened. I could not believe the corner. It, I turned on the whole thing. We played a second time and I cannot wait to play again. Wow. Yeah. Uh, floored, floored by this game that I shit on for 60 <laughs> minutes. I can't I think of all the things that you guys have recorded that I've not been in, this is the one I'm most excited to see. Uh -huh. It's it, I was texting Gavin about it saying exactly what you said, Eric, of I've never seen a bigger 180 from anyone with any game than you two with immortality. There are sections of that second video we filmed that are complete silence because you guys are just like reading the text and like getting wrapped up in the story. And it has made me so happy how invested you both are. We need to we need to finish this before this comes out, though. I don't want you guys to get spoiled. For yeah, no, definitely. I don't want to either. I, I'll say this about this game. I, uh, I, I, you may or may not know that I, my favorite uh, creator of all time is David Lynch, right? I, I yes. kind of worship yeah. David Lynch uh, above all else, all others. And uh, I have, David Cronenberg comes, has come close in the past, but I've never encountered anyone <clears throat> who is as, as Lynchy and as Lynch, and a lot of people try. And I'm not saying Cronenberg's trying, he's his own thing, but it's the mm -hmm. closest thing I can get to being like of the same level uh, of of just like immersive weird aesthetic and intellectualism and, and layers that the David Lynch productions are and this game has it like I, I I've never I've played all the games that they tout as like the Alan Wakes all the the one that Funhouse played for a while about the weird town and the person shows up that's supposed to be very David Lynchy that's fucking dog shit like not none of no other movie any anytime something's de is described as david lynchian or lynch-esque it's always a letdown this game fucking nails it it is really impressive and it's really fun and it's uh bizarre just bizarre. i can't wait huh cannot wait to continue that with you guys yeah me too how many pots will it be uh three or four i think i bet it'll be four, four. i don't four. think there's from from what we did and what we found in this last one i don't think that i think we're probably about halfway i bet we get pretty deep in three and then in four we get it about halfway through the video and we are i bet we're gonna be fired up <laughs> i mean that'll be a nice <laughs> contrast between that and our thumbsticks videos which i think will be 650 pounds. oh my god oh no uh -oh. what <laughs> we're, we're, we filmed two thumbsticks videos and we haven't won yet to get off of base sticks. We're, we haven't even we're used my episode. thumbsticks yet. <laughs> <laughs> we have made it to the final six times. Gavin and I just have had issues recently. Uh, we wanted to record. Finally, something happened, Jeff, that I've heard about countless times from you throughout okay. the year. Sort of reputation thing. Gavin, and I, I thought it would be fun because Gavin and I play Halo Infinite all the time together. We haven't done any ranked so I thought, oh, it'd be fun if you and I do a ranked thing. And so we did it and we filmed all five games and uh, we decided to scrap the video because we didn't have anything due to the fact that in game <laughs> one and game two, Gavin was trying to play using the large TV in his office that was in front of his face and he couldn't see and it was making him sick. And so he had one kill in the first game and then two kills in the second game, which is horrendous for him. Like, this is the really bad performance, even for Gavin's standards. And then in the Thanks. third game, he, you're welcome, he decided to grab an HDMI cable so he could move the gameplay to a different screen that's, that he could use. But when he did that, he lost all of his footage for the first two games. <laughs> Gone. So we lost two and a half games worth of footage. We have half a game there. In our fourth game, everybody on the other team quit except one guy so we didn't really get anything there 
So Gavin had a game and a half. And so we decided to scrap our entire hour of footage that we recorded. Complete waste of time. That would have been a lot to cut as well, because one of the people on our team was very unhappy that I wasn't doing well <laughs> and kept writing a lot of mean things. <laughs> And we kept getting matched with them over and over again. So they had like a three game arc with Gavin getting progressively more angry at him. To the point where he would, he would like load in with us and he'd be like, oh shit. And just be like, stop shit on me. And I'm there trying to plug in cables and like unfreeze my audio. So we lost that. And then the next day decided, well, let's do it again. And we both made or used alternate profiles because I thought me being ranked what I was might like make it tougher for Gavin's ranking because they might factor that in. So let's start fresh. So we we both are on alternate accounts. We get ready to go. We're recording. I do the intro for what we're going to do. I set everything up. I then learned that you need to play a minimum of 25 Halo Infinite games before it lets you do ranked. So we can't we can't do ranked. So then we just decide to play normal Halo Infinite and that'll be the video. We finished the video. I have accidentally stopped recording my audio 12 seconds into what we did. So we've lost two Halo Infinite video. We've scrapped both of them because we just don't have anything to salvage it. Uh, we can't play Halo Infinite. The game that we play the most Without recording, without any issue, <laughs> we cannot capture a moment of. <laughs> so the, now we're uh, gonna. The plan is to wait for the new season to start, and then we can re-rank <laughs> on our main. So we re-rank it. Yeah, yeah. I think the universe is trying to tell you not to play Halo. It yeah, is the equivalent right. of you two always it raining when you guys would get together, but that eventually <laughs> stops. So I'm hopeful that eventually we will be able to record us playing Halo Infinite. I think actually, it Austin Summer just ended this week. <sighs> Yeah, it's over? so what, it's, what an amazing summer though. Phenomenal. According to whose metrics? <laughs> well, just weather metrics. <laughs> it fucking. I didn't what? understand what if he meant by your, it's the worst summer of my life. As, what are you yeah. talking about? It was 107 degrees every day. Everything in Austin died. Oh, I love it. I had fun what? swimming. You love it? <laughs> yeah, like out on the boat and stuff. It was amazing. I mean, that was fun. Yeah. And, and well, summary, was I good. mean, the day to day, like, like putting the bins out and coming back sweating. Not ideal. <laughs> okay. But I'm talking about a, th what, what allows you summer antics was phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> getting in your pool, getting in your pool when it was 94 out and you made the pool 94 was a really interesting way to kind of cap off the whole thing. Yeah, I messed that up. <laughs> that, was, so getting in, that was a great way to cap off a weird summer, man. Here's, here's, here's how I envisioned that went down, Eric. I think it went down like this. Meg was like, they're coming over again. And Gav's like, ah, they keep asking to come over every Saturday. And Meg's like, it's fucking summer's over. We got to do something about this. Make it hot. Make it so unpleasant that they don't come back. And Gavin's like, yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> boil them out. Let's, Wait. Let's, let's boil yeah. them like lobsters. He, Wait, he, you guys, he got invited or you went to Gavin's pool and it was warmer in the pool than it was outside the no, pool? No, 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 Andrew. It was the same temperature in the pool <laughs> as it was outside of the pool. So when you stood perfectly still inside the pool, it did not feel like there was any water anywhere. It oh, was just no. 94 degrees across your entire body, no matter how deep or shallow you were in the pool. Oh. We got, we, uh, I, I just was stood in there with you and your small wife and i just i was just like look i've never been a good host i apologize <laughs> <laughs> i'm not good at this some people have it i don't have it i don't know what i'm doing it was it was legitimately the funniest way to like cap off summer that was so <laughs> relentlessly hot to be like ah oh, let's cool off in this pool and it's walking in and going what the f Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you, said, you were mad. You were pretty mad about it. It was so, like, it was, I mean, really, I was sort of, I was just flummoxed. Like, I've never, <laughs> it's just never been so hot out. And, and then you get in a pool that is equally hot <laughs> as outside. It was incredible. I've never done anything like that. It was really stunning. Thank you for the new experience, Gav. Hey, yeah. Uh, you know, I've learned from my mistakes. Mm -hmm. We're moving on. I, all jokes aside, it's a even at ninety four degrees, it is a joy to get to spend a Saturday with you, in in or in or out of a pool. It doesn't matter where I am. It was fun. We listened to the playlist in ninety eight a lot. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, we did. Nice. Oh, that was good.
Oh man! Hey, I have a question for you guys. I was talking to my, you know, my my video game buddies. Uh, I was talking. We were <laughs> we were trucking last night, and we're up in Alaska. Oh, we're gonna now. talk we're, about that. We're going up to Pedro Bay. We're, we're running the oh, fuck. We were running some some <laughs> some long pipes up to Pedro Bay. I had uh, Bernie Burn Dog had one of these uh, had an eight wheel. Oh my god! It was an eight slaughter. It's the biggest thing I've ever <laughs> seen in my entire life. Anyway. Uh, we got to talking and, uh, they were sharing stories about hallucinating, like times they've hallucinated in their life from being ill or, oh, yeah. uh, you know, and I got to thinking, I don't think I've ever hallucinated at all. Like, I can't remember a single time in my life where I was, in, I was ever in a situation where I hallucinated. Have you guys ever actually hallucinated and saw things that weren't there? I have once. Really? Yeah. I think I had heat stroke or something. I was on a holiday and I was just feeling like a bit in the sun too long and I went into throw up and uh went into the villa and i opened the toilet seat and a bottle of ketchup fell out of the toilet onto the floor <laughs> i was like jesus and then i was like oh there's no ketchup <laughs> <laughs> even your hallucinations are boring i know i got, i shouldn't uh, i don't know why i told that yeah that's shite in it what that's kind of ketchup yeah. was it <laughs> just like a Bog standard like squirt bottle of Heinz ketchup. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Did you just had French fries or something? <laughs> no, and I didn't even like ketchup then. Oh my god! <laughs> Your idle mind was thinking of ketchup. That's really weird. <laughs> oh man! Yeah. How about anyone else? Yeah, how about the rest I've, of you? I've I've had like has anyone here experienced exploding ear syndrome? Like, I feel like that's maybe the closest I've had to like that. What? <laughs> you just made me spit out all over my fucking <laughs> keyboard. Oh my, what? I have regulation Ew. ears, but exploding ears, it's like a thing where when you're like coming, you're waking up or like falling asleep, where it, my ears sounds like a bomb is going off. Like, it, it, it's a sound that doesn't actually exist, but like it ramps up in speed or, or, or in, in effect, I guess. Oh. Yeah. I feel like so Eric has that, that with like white noise. Now, I've, I've I've had that sometimes. You think that you think you hear a bang, you think that something has happened. You hear it ramp up, and then you hear it, and then it's like, oh, I guess something's wrong with my brain, and then you go to yeah. sleep. Yeah, yeah, it's like it throttles almost, like it, it increases yeah. and spikes. Yeah, yeah. Is it kind of like when you're falling asleep at night? So, if you're like half asleep, sometimes you can hear people talking, but you can't make out what they're saying. You can just kind of hear them talk. Have you, I don't you, have that. You guys yeah, don't have I think, that? Uh, I think you have a, I think that might be <laughs> a uh, brain disorder. You bud. got your AirPods in there? <laughs> yeah, you all right? No, now. you've never heard that before? Sometimes it's y'all. Vo like, sometimes I can hear you guys talking. Voices? No. Like, you're, saying, no like, you're saying you hear voices like, when you go to bed? Yeah, like I can tell, like Gavin and uh. Andrew specifically, I can hear Gavin and Andrew, like, when I'm like half asleep on my pillow sometimes, and I'm like, you know, you're like, you know you're about to fall asleep, but you're not <laughs> totally asleep, and you're just kind of like relaxing into sleep i can hear like in the background real quietly like just people talking and i think like if i try to pay attention to what they're saying i'll wake up and then i won't be able to go back to sleep so i'll just go to sleep uh, i know i've never uh, had yeah, that i mean what? i've had i've like listened to stuff and then suddenly like the voices i'm listening to get all peaceful and i feel like if i try and listen i won't fall asleep but that's because i'm actually putting shit in my ears though yeah no i don't my brain doesn't make it up what <laughs> yeah Jeff, I can't. You I don't think. Go, Jeff, you have to go to a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? That surely that's happened to y'all. Uh, no. 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 All right. Well, I, I, I don't listen. I, I don't know. I've never talked about it with her. Oh. <laughs> you don't <laughs> keep it that way, bud. <laughs> I, I don't think I've maybe <laughs> talked about it until now. <laughs> Is she one of the voices? No. Uh, no. It's either it's either people I don't recognize or it's it's. In my life, I can remember distinctly Gavin, Andrew, Bernie <laughs> Burns. Uh, that's an, a particularly annoying one. Uh, so you like? I think I've heard Gus. People I know, a lot of people I know, and then sometimes people I don't know. So like huh. you've always, you've always had this, and then after you met me, like one of your voices was British. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess so. What that's fuck? interesting. What? I wonder if like are you sleeping and you don't realize it? Um, maybe, but it happens, you know, a couple times a month. Because I had one time where I, my dream, talking about boring dreams, I was laying in bed, my hand was off the bed, and it felt like somebody fist bumped me, but nobody was there, and it woke me up, it was jarring. <laughs> it was a gentle ghost situation, like Eric, Eric say gentle whisper ghost. This was a gentle fist bump ghost, but it, I woke up, I was like, who the fuck fist bumped me? 
nobody's in this room. What is going on? And then just realizing, oh, that was just a shit dream where I like felt <laughs> the thing. None of that happened. So this could be maybe you're just having shit dreams of people talking. Can you hear what they're saying or is it like just whispers that are I feel like to if I out? really focused, maybe I could make it out. But you'd never want to because you just want to go to sleep. But it's comforting. That's fair. Like, it's really comforting. I don't mind it. It's a nice background noise. It's it's weird that my voice making you feel comfortable. <laughs> the story is making me feel uncomfortable. Yeah, same. <laughs> I, uh, I'm looking it up, and I'm finding reasons you might hear voices at night. Uh, Lack of sleep. High temperature. <laughs> stress. Grief. Mental oh, illness. God. Hunger. <laughs> all right, I bet well, you're I just don't, hungry. I don't think I I'm hungry, but all the, I think all the others apply. I think, I think it's hot where you are, and you have mental illness. <laughs> and grief. <laughs> well, I mean, I, maybe the comment leavers will back me up. Maybe, they, maybe I'm not the only one. I really thought that that was a common thing. That's interesting. It's <laughs> wow. crazy. We should, we should wrap this one up. I'm just, that's a real cliffhanger. What that's are your hallucinogenics, uh, Eric? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Minor, minor, all from, minor, all from like um, drugs. So like they're not, they're not hearing oh, things before you go to sleep. Drugs. Yeah, yeah. But I don't are, think I've, I don't think I've ever hallucinated on drugs either, though. Really? Uh, what? I don't think so. You know, no, no acid or, or mushrooms or anything. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I was a teenager once. I've experimented in a. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind talking about it. It's just, you know, you kind of like... I accidentally did angel dust once. <laughs> what? And I don't... Oh what? God, I don't what? think I hallucinated there either, although I was fucked up. Uh, what is that? What? It's, uh, it's a, I guess it's PCP. It is. It's yeah. PCP. I, I thought purpose. it was two uh, no longer continued flavors of Kool Aid that you accidentally mixed together. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dust, anyway, thanks Angel for listening. This was to a big face. thing in like the nineties. <laughs> yeah. Was well, like... this was been when I was twenty three or so, yeah. and on, on yeah, yeah, tour yeah. with the band, and I accidentally did it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I I I thought I smoked pot, and it was laced yeah, with. That is. Yeah. That, I mean, that's uh, that's about. I I know so many people that have had that happen to them. Yeah. But I don't think I, I don't think I hallucinated then either. Also, don't do drugs, kids. Don't do drugs. Eric, Eric, and I did drugs in our teens, so you don't have to. You do learn from one. Learn care. from our mistakes. No, no, no. Don't listen to him. Don't do drugs. <laughs> and Millie, don't listen to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. That's <laughs> long go. gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. All right. Now we should wrap this one up. All right. Let's go ahead and cut all the Jeff did drugs once talk, <laughs> and we'll uh, <laughs> we'll see you next week for episode one hundred and seventy seven. <laughs> Uh, be sure to check out all of our other fine productions. We've got a break show. We've got uh, supplemental content just about every goddamn week. We've got uh, video gameplay twice a week, once behind a paywall, once for free. Go to We've, facepod.com slash first. That's where you can yeah. sign up and support this show directly. People are like, oh, how do I do that? You sign up there, and then you go watch and listen to our stuff on the site. That is how that happens. That's how that works. Support us directly that way. Yeah, do it. How is said. that us directly? How do you mean? It's our we link. Are, that that is how that is how the money is allocated to us is through signups through that link, and uh, if you're already a first member, like once you sign up, then watching and listening to our stuff through the first RSS feed or on the site that is uh, face stuff or let's play stuff that gets attributed to us. So that is how you support us directly. And by the way, you have been supporting us directly, and it, yeah. we really appreciate it. If you're just listening to the podcast, you're supporting us directly. Thank you. Thank yeah, but you. We, we really, really, really do appreciate it. And you guys have been supporting the shit out of us lately. Yeah. C cannot yeah, thank you enough. Amazing. Yeah. That's why we yeah. can say no to things. Okay, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. 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 Hey, guys. Major League fan Jack here with a look at next week's episode of Face. Let's talk writing utensils. Andrew's chair put him in the Matrix. The gang went to Sloppy Joe's. Let's talk Key West. Gavin takes a spill. And once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of Face. <laughs>